I had a buddy that, oh my goodness, even in the military. So we went through, we went through basic together and no joke. Pizza face was a compliment with how bad he had it. Oh, that poor bastard. He had craters to the point when he went full-time active, even in basic, he had a shaving waiver because how bad his face was. You look at his face, it looks like the dark side of the moon. Damn, bro. Like it was, bro had indents in his cheeks. It was like, mm. I mean, we're no longer friends just from time and everything that went yeah, on. Yeah, time happened. But bro had struggle city. But bro had a personality, still was able to pull girls. And he's married now, has a couple kids, and I good I, for him. He lives up in uh, Dallas right now. I was good friends with the guy who he was like the third or fourth ugliest man I've ever met in my life. We hung out all the time when I was in the army. And he would pull down chicks because he was just that interesting of a person. So, <laughs> Goose, I hope you watch this one specifically, <laughs> and I'll send it to you. He was like, hey, I'm going to propose to Emily. And I was like, and he showed me a picture. I was like, bro, she's out of your league by, like, a couple leagues by, like, eight. You're not going to get that far, Navy-wise. He's like, well... I'll play my odds. And he, they're married now. They have two kids. They have Gotham and Robin. Yeah. Nicknames, obviously. But nicknames I, I gave him because he always says, oh, I'm Batman. Well, then, bro, in, Batman. in the middle, in the middle <laughs> of the fucking night, middle, in the middle of the fucking night. In the middle of the night. When Gotham needs you or Robin needs you, who's going to wake up? I'm Batman. <laughs> you're you're going to wake up and take care of the kid. and. No joke, I told him, I was like, bro, the only thing you have going for you is your technical and work skills. He was like, I appreciate that. And this is how I know Oklahoma, because he's from Oklahoma. Yeah. Oklahoma came out, because if you don't know Oklahoma, Oklahoma has a very, very strong standpoint of the workers there are workers. If you ever get cut off by a semi, look at the license plate. It's probably Oklahoma. Yeah. And no joke, every time Oklahoma license plate cuts me off, I'll message this motherfucker. It's like, look here, Goose. Oklahoma just fucking cut me off. He was like, I apologize. <laughs> <laughs> like, no joke, I can go through our tech. And it's, I apologize. But no, we were in tech school and he was going to. Propose. He's going to propose. And I was like, your ugliest son. I was like, bro, you look like a thumb. Well, again, and, this, and I this, say this a lot. I know this, this one of my sayings is like, you look like a thumb. Now, this friend of mine who I was friends with, like last time I touched base with, granted, this was like five years ago or something like that. He was in a very serious relationship with a girl. Okay. And it's like, okay, bro. Which, by the way, Mike does not look like a, like a thumb at all. Neither if does I, Dykes. If I was gay, I would totally let Mike be my uh, baby daddy, and I would totally <laughs> fucking clean his house like nobody's business. Hold on. Hold on. Let me get a big gulp here. <laughs> get, get that big gulp going. <laughs> <coughs> but no joke. that With everything with this that's been happening, it, it definitely gave me more perspective. And it was one of those, look, Goose, you're you're definitely a thumb, but you have a work ethic like nobody's business. Yeah. And you are another one. You have a work ethic like nobody's business. Like, no joke. We go here, and obviously Monday, we're showing up. When I first started working with you, I know I just came off a fucking binge mm -hmm. of drinking everything in the bathroom sink. And... You come in an hour later, I think it was like eight thirty, nine o'clock, same thing. And you're just over here. <laughs> Done. <laughs> Done. <laughs> and we talk and we we're talking with Rich Bro at the time and I think Valentino was there. Mm -hmm. 
and we're all just talking. You're just like, oh yeah, I just I just had a weekend. It it's one of those weekends. And Ridge Bro shares one of his stories, which bro, we need to have you on the podcast. Like, over there. Or right here. We, Rich Bro. We need Rich Bro on the we podcast. We need you on the podcast because you have stories that we could definitely most fascinating man in the world. <laughs> definitely the most fascinating man in our podcast and probably the world. But we'll we'll have these conversations. I was just like, mm, okay, this is interesting. Well, the thing is, I do appreciate you saying that I'm a hard worker because I don't picture myself as a hard worker. And I can respect that because Dave, one of the new, oh, my admin that's yeah. under me, He's like, oh, you work so hard. And I was like, bro, I feel like I show up to work. Because I, I get to work about 6 and I leave at 2. Mm-hmm. And all my meetings are scheduled from 8 to about 10. That way if they continue, I can continue them. So I have them and he was like, you're always going to all the other offices. You're always talking to everyone. And I was like, I show up to work and I feel like I don't <clears throat> do anything. Yes. Like, I feel like it. He was like. Bro, you come back with so many freaking meeting minutes or meeting notes, and you're like, oh, this, or oh, this. And then when you finally get hands on keyboard, you knock out four or five of these things to the point that I was like, okay, I respect that. You're, you're with me. You're in the same organization. I didn't realize it till I had a, another employee external from where I'm at. It was like, why are you always working so hard? I was like, I'm just doing my job. Yeah, I don't feel like I'm working hard. It. I actually feel like I'm leaving gaps. Exactly. Like, so I've I've taken off the past two days. I'll I'll go back Monday, and I'm gonna go back Monday. And to me, I'm I'm just gonna hard charge. But yeah, it, I'm gonna be hammering away at shit. Like, but I I thought about this over the past two days. I've really, really thought about this. Wasn't expecting this to come on a podcast, but I've thought about this, and every time I get back after a leave or after a couple days or whatever I'm doing or even the next day, it's like, what can I get done from six to eight when, when people aren't in the office? To go, your account's fixed, your account's fixed, your account's fixed. Oh, here you go. Your share permissions. Oh, here you go. You have access to my system. Oh, here. I just cleared out six, seven tickets of our 20 ticket queue. But to me, it was like, I didn't do anything. I did. Oh, Mike, I need to top you off your drink. Oh, here you go. You need more tobacco. Oh, here. It's simple fixes for me that I personally don't recognize. I don't understand. It's like, eh, it's it's small. Yeah. But but it's to the point where I had to actually have my coworkers address this to me. They said, hey, Mike, when was the last time you took, like, any, and I've brought it up to you. When was the last time you took Bro, a significant you, amount of time off? You threw me. <laughs> you threw me. You're like, Bro, I'm taking off. And it's like. <laughs> Hold on. Mike's taking off. I, like, I was like, don't I, get me wrong. I I will always have my 40 PTO is mm-hmm. my zero. Like 40, 40 hours of PTO is my zero. That will always be my zero. Even with me taking off the past two days. Yeah. My zero is still 40 hours of PTO. Same way I do finances. My zero is five hundred dollars of my living checking account like i'll always live with a a zero amount is this level like you always need a a barrier but i i said to you i was like i'm gonna take off a day this week and then you're like what did i say what were my words i don't i don't remember <laughs> i don't remember are you okay bro? yeah no are you okay is anything because, what's going on because it's out of the norm and mm-hmm. what we've always talked about on this podcast if it's out of the norm Hit someone up. This goes back to... Make sure everything's okay. Exactly. <clears throat> and you know what? He was just taking personal time. I just... I just. But it, it's one of those... 
it's a suicide awareness thing. We're both yeah. veterans. We both understand, oh, this is going on. This is going on. Life happens. But, hey, this. It was like, oh, I'm taking off this. It was like, bro, are but you okay? It, it was literally, I just, I was like. I just need time I off. I just need a an extra day this weekend. I just need an extra day. And I didn't do anything with that time out of the ordinary. I just, I sat around home. I watched anime. I played video we games. We didn't even really I, start grounded there. <clears throat> no, we had It was just, I'm just taking the day off. Like, I, I, I just I need me time. I, I, I came over to your house. We replaced brake pads twice. And we did play the not Zelda Zelda game. Yeah. I, I really need to find the name of that um, game. And, but, my coworkers, they brought it up, and they they said to me, and, and I'm having my co like some of these coworkers I've worked with for for years, years and years and years, at, at least four years, uh, from, longer. D from when Dutting. I was working there, yeah, Dudding, I've I think I've worked with for seven years now, um, about 2015, 2016, I'd say, and 2017 for him. Okay, um, 2016, I came on to this. Job. 2018, I came onto the contract. Yeah. So and so. I, uh, they were like, when was the last time you took like a week off? And I was like, so Mike, um, Mike predates bang energy. Drinks. <laughs> That's how long he's had these relationships with people. And I was like, well, I haven't taken a week off since before I moved back to Texas. Yeah. And realistically that week <laughs> off I took to come to Texas to visit family and if you're taking a week off to go visit family it's not actually time off. Yeah, cuz you're travel and Yeah, you're 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 scheduling out time to go visit people and it's it's just not it's, it's not, not relaxation the same. time. It's no it's to the point to where I'm like I'm going to I'm going to really freaking tag on this. So, if you're military, you're taking leave, you're taking time out. Stop trying to go visit everyone. Yeah. Care about the people that actually stay in contact and push to those people. This is where I'm at. Because if they're willing to come see you, they matter. Yeah. If they're not, then don't fucking bother with them, bro. This goes back to a value. What is the value of this individual? Do, for ex perfect example, I value Mike here. It's like, okay, where do I value these other individuals? Okay, well, Goose shows up. I was like, okay. Uh, okay. Yeah, yeah, he's about yeah. even with Mike because Mike has value in my life and Goose has value in my life. I don't look like a thumb, so I'm slightly higher. Goose, I, I said it. Yeah, I, well, said I mean, it, Goose. me and Mike have a business, so. <laughs> Goose, when you move to Texas, here you go. <laughs> yeah. Did I get that camera? I got all three cameras. We're good for editing, but Goose... Come to Texas. We'll throw you on the podcast and talk shit. But no, it <sighs> taking leave, taking PTO is a big freaking issue in America. Well, I mean, how much time are you actually given? I get no six time. I get fifteen hours whoa, or, whoa, or no fifteen. Out. I get fifteen days a year. I have sixteen hours, two days. Six time with the same company. No, I, we, I don't get any sick time. We both work. So maybe it's something that's changed. It might change with the next contract you jump on. But we have two days of sick time. No, I get no sick time. Oh, I'm saying it might change with the next contract. No, I need you to understand. I get no sick time. <laughs> <laughs> this is why I need to label mics because... Because you're not on yours? Unlike kelp, I don't do intentionally unaggressive maneuvers, but I definitely fucking mouth my mic. That 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 was all alcohol right there. Goodness. Totally. But then this is perfect segue. So so I had this airman I brought into the squadron. Yeah. He worked there until he did his his he was a four year contract, two years reserve quote unquote he jumped over to contractor he did contractor for eight years he just jumped over to government the one thing which is we were talking about this earlier this week but my biggest bonus that government employees 
employees, employees, employees were drinking, obviously. No. No. I got to bang another freaking topo after this. Next intermission. Hey, girl, hey. I'm holding you to that. I will. It'll be at the beginning of the next one. But um, I'll just say Thomas. So Thomas, because that doesn't really give you anything. Oh, I know exactly who you're talking about. Good yeah. luck. No, you I don't. don't. <laughs> but he just started as government, and I asked him why he did it. And he said, because the new government edition for actual technicians is more value than what the contractor position gave him. Really? Like, that's impressive. Substantially. That's very impressive. We're talking about 15 to 20. Damn. And I was like, okay. He was like, and if they didn't do that, I wouldn't have even have touched it. It it would have been irrelevant to me. I was like, okay. Sounds good. So we have, we have these other employees coming in and other contract positions coming in. Do me a favor. Give me a picture of me and my dog. Ugh. Double tap because I have a kid. What? Good, 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 good. All right. Now let me care about the photo. Pearl. There's the eyeball. <laughs> the roll. <laughs> Pearl. Oh, there you go. That's one of those. But I believe, no. I believe. This is why the conversation we had earlier this week or last week, government positions, position, 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 that's all. Use your words. So Use government positions words. have changed in the aspects of technical ability. So what this tells me is the government has realized we're going to keep losing people until we actually put value in people. And it's like, okay, well, how are you going to put value in people? Well, we throw a monetary value at it. And this monetary value depends on the government description of what your job title is. So I look at that and I was like, okay, well, if the government position for my job, because we talked about this specifically, mm -hmm. if they push this, I can buy my military service back. For this, retire here, still my disability, well, still I mean, this. That, that depends on the pay and the, yeah. And that's the biggest thing. Also, and this the, is where the, Thomas... the other side of it is that Go ahead. the government positions are no longer acts of Congress to fire, right? So government positions are not rated the same as they used to be. We are actually, and this is actually closing a loop, those, those of y'all in the government sector know, is because it used to be an act of Congress to fire someone from the government. So in order to get rid of someone, you promoted them into a different position. Correct. Which ended up, we got a whole bunch of useless motherfuckers in the Pentagon, right? Yeah. That's really what that ended up being. And so they're trying to close the loop on this shit. And this is perfect segue into exactly what I was talking about. In continuation, it's very much, this is what the value is. It's like, well, Bro, I know how much you are valued at contract wise. You're valued at, we'll say ten dollars. Now you're making fourteen dollars yeah. with the government versus the contract. You're making thirteen dollars. But we value at this. You're not supervising anyone. Okay, you know if they make a position for me at that, still at the same rate. It's going to be very, very hard to turn down mm -hmm. because don't get me wrong. I'm not chasing money. I'm very content where I'm at. Like, let's be real. Me and you have mailbox money and we have a point. It was just like. I don't, I, I don't, I don't, I don't care. need for any. Yeah. I don't have a need for anything. So it's one of those. I'm content. It's going to, unless you have a remote job. For both of us, yeah, and I can very verbally speak this, unless it's a remote job doing exactly what I'm doing now, without having to worry about all the bells and whistles. I don't have a reason <sighs> to move. Like, I'm I'm content. Oh. 
yeah. I'm at the point with the mixed drinks. I'm like, mm, I'm not going anywhere. Oh, Bo, you almost made it up. There you go. Oh, here you go. Keeping me to my word. Here you go. Shotgun this bad boy. Who? Thumb over. Trying to fucking pop it and it wouldn't pop. <laughs> what did I say at the beginning of the podcast? It's gonna be a great one. So shotgunning Chico's is like the worst thing in the world. <laughs> I made both of those. Hold on, time out. Dude, you made it into a thing. Uh, but how far am I away? And how much have I had to drink? Okay. <laughs> like, um, I'm five oh, mixed drinks me. in. Hi, Bo. You're going to smell like alcohol, but okay. Oh, yeah. I'd much rather shotgun a beer than Chico. <laughs> <laughs> no video. The timer. Oh. Whew. Okay, so, uh, but let's talk about King for an issue. King for an issue. So I know I texted you. Yeah, you texted me. This is then you. This is predating drinking. It was what overpopulation? Overpopulation. It was overpopulation. So Ooh. I have a. My I, brain still works. I have a hot take on this. So let me let me preface this. Okay, go for it. So, king for an issue. Let's fix overpopulation in a way that isn't mass genocide, that isn't destroying destroying people, destroying organizations. Like, I'm not talking about a Hitler, a Stalin, a Mussolini. Like, let's fix overpopulation for the world. Okay. And... King for an issue. Let let's solve overpopulation. I think. You say Holocaust. Fuck you, bro. <laughs> I know. I know. I know. I know. I'm a blue eye, but um, <laughs> blue eye, blonde haired individual. I was blonde when I was a child. Uh, Pearl, come up here. Stop looking at me and just come up here. Come on. Get. Come on. There you go. Dogs are at the point. They're there being difficult. Go. It's midnight. What do you expect? <laughs> I mean, Cabo's not getting difficult. No, Cabo's just like <laughs> Cabo just driving. exists. Yeah, yeah, Cabo just exists. Hey, oh, bro. look, I still have a topo. <laughs> I, I don't. I miss my topo. <laughs> Do you want a topo? I want. I still have a full drink with ice. I've still got half. Um, my hot take is that we don't have to fix overpopulation. Explain. Overpopulation is self-correcting. Statistically, the, the, physically, up. I'm yes. all ears. I'm I'm listening. How do we fix overpopulation? Econ economically, you say it's it fixes yes. itself. Economic because you're like, well, food shortages and water shortages and all these shortages. Be, these shortages naturally cause an automatic correction in overpopulation. How so? Because people starve to death. <laughs> Lack of food will do yes, that. Okay. Yes. Economic pressures correct overpopulation. Just like how we have these underdeveloped countries which are building their populations while the overdeveloped countries who have it too easy and all this jazz have a lower population in whose populations are reducing. Which country? Like the United States, Japan. Britain, all your first world countries well, no, are I, reducing I understand that in population. To a point that China, Europe, and Japan have all gone into the negative. Chi China. No, no, China. let me continue. Hold on. And then you can say your segue. I'll stop. But all of them have gone into the negatives of 
continuing birth. Mm-hmm. Like the three. So we have China. There, He's going to touch on that one. But Japan and Europe as a whole have gone into the negatives of continuing population. So, But the China... China China is a special case. China did themselves dirty. China's the red-headed stepchild China, that we China just... China was like... UN well, nation, by the way. You can only have one kid. Well, no. Originally, it was one. That was back in the 90s. Yes, originally it was one. You're 24 years late. It's and, two no, now. but we are feeling the effect. China oh, yes. is we feeling, are feeling the, effects the effects of yeah. this now. Yes, agreed, okay. agreed, yes. Shut your fucking whore mouth, let mm. me talk. I mean, yeah. I did it last podcast. I said, fuck you. I get it. I, I fully received that because, no joke, after I left, Kelts over here is like, you know you told Mike, fuck you. And I was like, yes, but it was, it had value to what we were talking about. He was like, shut up. And I was like, and then I, anyway, I recaptured and I was like, look, Mike's going to totally retouch on this fuck next up time. now because we're not going to fucking rehash this shit. I'm talking about China right now. China has fucking done themselves dirty. And everyone's like, well, but it was so long ago. But they said you could have one kid, and everyone only wanted male. But what was the addition? They didn't just have one kid. Women can go back to work. Yes. So we double-tagged this. Yes. China China double-tagged this. Yeah. Because China is not we. We are not China. Fuck off, China. I don't give a fuck. Fuck you, China. Fuck you so hard. Anyways. (sighs) <sighs> but no, Fucking one China. child yes. and women can and, go back to work. But we're talking about the and, overpopulation. And they, they, and now they're feeling the repercussions of they've got, what, what do they call it? They, they like, um, empty limb or empty branch or something like that, which is what they refer to males who have no chance of getting, who don't, who aren't married, have no chance, who have no prospects of getting married or anything like that because there is an overabundance of males and not that many women to the point They're to where we go back stale into, males. we yeah. go into, you know, this is why we, we go into the um, human trafficking in China, which is where they're purchasing Korean, North Korean yeah. women who are trying to escape from North Korea and they're getting purchased up by Chinese males. I mean, to be what, their you, what you're talking about in a sum is a, so chess wise. And the reason I go back to chess is because China, because I don't know chess. No, because China, m- most communist countries will always go towards chess. So they'll go to a stalemate, but we've gotten to a point in China where we have a stalemate of men. Ah, Third world, loosely, America's view of third world countries has decided that China, South America, Africa, and extended, we're talking Persia to East. Yeah. So a minority of Middle Eastern countries are overpopulating. And we're fixing this. All right, again, I'm saying that you don't have to fix it. Because they'll fix themselves. Economic pressures and everything involved with it fixes it. So, I mean, if it fixes itself, that your standpoint is it'll fix itself. Yeah, because, because I mean, at the end of the day, because you're like, oh, man, people are going to starve to death. And it's like, yeah. Sucks to suck, bro. Fixing it, bro. I didn't just have a topo. Big gulps. Uh, <coughs> um, mm. But no, I. so I told you over break, I was like, the reason I chose King for an issue on this one is because I don't have a solution for this one. Like, my solution, how do we fix overpopulation? Overpopulization. Overpopulation. Overpopulization. Overpopulization. It's hard. You're you're seriously thinking about it. It's like, I mean, I've talked about before on the podcast. Is like, okay, maybe we we set a level of you've reached this whatever value we set, <clears throat> and you take a test to prove 
you have value to have a kid. Wow. Wow. I mean, but. Wow, bro. What I don't fucking know. dystopian world are you fucking living in? Fixing the issue we have of. Because even that's not a fix. It's hard. You you want to talk about overpopulation? See what you're you're talking about right now is because I'm like, oh man, population problems will fix itself, right? But will they? But what? You, yes, yes, one hundred percent, it will. Yes, I've the read economics, a couple, and I quote a couple books where it doesn't. The economics of it will fix itself because you can't get around the economics. But you can't. I'm at the you point physically, of physically when you can physically I, can't pe- feed people, people will disappear. How can I fix this issue? And over the past, I don't know, thirty minutes, I've thought about it. you can't. Seriously, the only solution is <clears throat> Toby. You are the solution for this. Toby is the solution for this. No, I mean, I, I mean, think I ab- don't, I don't think about it though, because it, it, it's not, it's not something that should be solved, because it is dependent on what, what is overpopulation dependency on? So dependent on the, no, re, re, I'm lay it out. For I am me. listening. Lay, lay it out for me. Think about this. What is what? So we're defines talking about overpopulation amount of. Resources amount of people that resources are going to right, and I've gone through the gambit. So, like so, we have so all these different about... shows of, oh well, if you don't have this value, then you're gonna die in the gas chamber. You're gonna die in this, and and was it the dude that just fought? Uh, was it fucking Mike Tyson? Um, he was a YouTuber, like I don't know, bro. Um, he was a YouTuber for a while, was canceled from YouTube, and what whatever. Like he just. Fought Mike Tyson on that one a couple years ago, maybe two years ago. But he showed in this show is like, if you don't have this GPA, <clears throat> you're not making it past the next grade. Yeah. So we have that theory, that understanding. And if you don't have this value, you're not continuing or you're not building into the populace, the population. And it's it's hard. Well, Overpopulization I mean, is a really, really hard one because pretty much everything you stated and everything I talked about with you is where I stand. It's really, really hard because it kind of really does solve itself. It, it, Either it is you... a self-regulating system. Now, people don't want to hear this I because mean, the problem with you have, self... You have this water, Mike. Either yeah. you can drink it or I'm going to drink it. Well, the, <laughs> the problem, and, and so this ties into, it's an argument that I've had with multiple people, is that every single war is driven economically. Oh, bro, hands it, down. It, 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 hands down. So what do people bring up when you make this statement? They're in it for blank. No, no, or... no. What is the one wars that they bring up that they're like, oh, well, this was not economic. You should be for very familiar what with What are you this. talking about? Every you're, freaking you're a, Middle Eastern a, war no, was as economic. Christian, as a Christian person, this should be one that you default to. Are you predating modern time? No, yes. So you're talking about the Crusades? I'm talking about the Crusades. The Crusades. Bro, that was a holy war, and that was no. based off of relics. Nope. Nope, 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 Then nope. I have no idea Dig what you're talking it. about. The Crusades were all about economics. We, especially during the Second Crusade, we Which, were going through. Are we talking about pre? Um, so at this point, are we talking about pre Black Plague or post Black Plague? Pre. So at that point, we're talking about relics. They fought about relics. No. To my understanding, <clears throat> I could be wrong. So, I would love to be wrong. So because I love to learn about something. And, else. and so I'd I'd have to do my dates again, but I'm pretty sure this was pre Black Plague, but. I, the, the war, one of the crusades was set off because there was a drought going on in Europe. So close, close crusade. 
in the sense of Persia or <clears throat> crusade in the sense of Middle East? Middle East. Okay, so close crusade is Persia, the Persian Gulf, the Gulf Sea, uh, all that. We're, we're, we're talking about that in the sense of Italy to the right, for those that don't understand that one. So I I understand where you're coming because there was there was a movie so, uh, five, so, six years ago, Season of the Witch or something something about the witch. So so going back into my topic real quick, right? I, I'm listening. Um, I'm all is in. they they part of the reason that they kicked off the crusade is and I'm I'm doing quotation marks very, very intentionally. Is it's because loosely because we haven't really, really there, dove into there was this. a there was a drought. And and there there is going to be food shortages. Yep. And how do you mitigate food shortages? Well, how about this? How about we get a bunch of you know av a as we of age adult males we out acquire of the country, other and we, people's resources. Yeah, and we acquire other people's resources. Acquire.